We are back with Congressman Jim McGovern on the OTR Pop Quiz. Congressman, question three. This speaker of national renown will give addresses at both Tuskegee University and Oberlin. A Princeton and Harvard Law graduate herself, she might lecture on her passions, eating, right, and exercise. And this person would be... This is the first lady? That would be the first lady. Yeah. President, and, and the first lady's husband, President Obama, came to your district last year to speak at the Worcester Technical High School graduation. And this year he'll address a tech school in South Dakota. The president will also speak at a New England military academy on May 20th of this year. Where will that be? Uh, uh, Norwich or? No. Uh, you're, I think you're barking up the right tree. It's the U.S. Coast Guard Academy okay, in right, London. Right, right, okay. You were going in the right well, direction. Right. When he takes the stage next weekend at the University of Houston, this Hollywood star might start with, all right, all right, all right. That was lousy in person. Actually, I think it's all right, all right, all right, all right. All right, all right. <laughs> or, you know, you might, he, are you ready for this? He might drive up in a Lincoln. <laughs> Oh, uh, 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 Matthew McConaughey. There you go. Right. <laughs> he is being paid $135,000 plus expenses. OTR pop quiz over, sir. Thank you. Um, you have a long history with the Clintons. You supported Hillary Clinton in 2008 over President Obama, back then Barack Obama. Do you think she faces even bigger challenges this time around? Um, she'll, she has to testify. She's agreed to testify before a congressional committee later this month on her emails and Benghazi. Is this going to be a stumbling block for her? I don't think so. I mean, I think uh, I think she's a terrific uh, uh, candidate. I think she'll be a, a great president. Um, Does she have to put these two issues behind her? Well, I mean, her she, first? She, she's going to, and uh, the problem is, uh, you know, she has to deal with a very uh, politicized Washington D.C. that you know that basically are, is still involved in the politics of personal destruction. We've had I don't know how many uh, investigations on Benghazi. Every single report, bipartisan report, is, is basically said there's nothing there, and yet uh, we're doing it again. Um, and I think people are getting sick of it. I think people want to talk about what are you going to do to improve the economy? How are we going to be able to afford to send our kids to college? You know, what are you going to do about uh, uh, climate change? I mean, there are a thousand issues out there that people, everyday people care about. And I think, you know, and she's addressing them. So if, I, if other people want to talk about scandals and Benghazi and whatever, there's nothing there. Uh, let them do it. But I think you, the American people are sick of it. You have been deeply involved with Cuba going back for right. decades. Um, and now that a new era is about to launch, do you think the president and Congress have gone far enough? No, I think we need to go further. The president, I give great credit for, uh, you know, for basically taking the steps that he did. But we can't lift the economic embargo unless Congress repeals it. So Congress has a role here. Um, look, it, it makes no sense that we have economic relations with China and Russia in almost every other country in the world, but we don't with Cuba. Um, the Cold War is over. Uh, it's time for us to uh, relegate this policy uh, to, you know, to history and, and have a more mature grown-up policy. I think the more we can trade with Cuba, the more we can have uh, visits to Cuba, uh, the better for the Cuban people uh, and the better for the, us as well. There's no reason to have an enemy 90 miles off our coast. Uh, so I give the president credit, but Congress needs to step up and, and repeal the embargo. This past week, we uh, learned that the NSA apparently has exceeded the number of telephone calls they're allowed to collect. A section of the Patri Act that allows bulk collection of American uh, telephone calls is coming up for renewal. How will you vote and why? Well, I'll have to see what the, what, the, what the renewal looks like. But I've always voted against the Patriot Acts. Um, I, I believe in privacy. Um, and I remember when I voted against the first Patriot Act, um, you know, I, I, I never thought that the, the legislation would be abused by our government as much as it has been. Uh, the surveillance, the, the, you know, the collection of data uh, on people who have done nothing wrong um, it violates their privacy. And I, um, and I think it's very important that we protect that right. And so uh, I've always voted against the Patriot Acts because I don't think that, uh, I, think, I, th I think they violate the best of America. So we'll see what the new bill looks like. Uh, but, um, uh, but my record has been uh, against these bills. Congressman, thank you for joining us this morning. Happy it's always great to see you. Thank you. And by the way, Mindy McGovern, happy Mother's Day to you, too. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. <laughs> see, he's a good boy. <laughs> and Lisa, too, my wife. Yeah. <laughs> thank you to the Congressman for being our OTR guest today. Coming up next in OTR, the presidential race. Everybody into the GOP pool. Can you tell me what these five people all have in common? They're all running for president.